Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account... Only Rosie several- O'Donnell. CNN plus Fox plus MSNBC equals CIA plus NSA. Welcome to the Savage Nation. It's clear now that Mayhem Kelly is working for the other side. It's clear now that Martha Washington and Roger Ailes and Rupert Murdoch are working for Hillary Clinton. It's as clear as a bell that Mayhem Kelly has gone over to the dark side. And frankly, her looks are changing. It's the portrait of Dorian Kelly. The more she sells out, the wider her nostrils have become. Listen to what I just said to you. Have you seen them flare? This woman was once pretty. And the more she has sold out, the wider her nostrils have become. They're almost porcine. She snorts her insults at America. And as I say, it's now the portrait of Dorian Kelly, not the portrait of Dorian Gray. And I have a question for Martha Washington. Why did Martha Washington keep the one woman, Republican candidate, Carly Fiorina off the main stage. Why did she relegate Carly Fiorina to the, let's say, the sideshow? Miss Feminist Mayhem Kelly? And by the way, how come there was not one question from Brett Baer, who I thought was a journalist, aimed at the damage that Obama has done and what these Republican candidates would do to undo the damage that Obama has done? And by the way, how come the great journalist Brett Baer did not ask one question question about Benghazi. And by the way, how come there was not one question about the damage that Hillary Clinton has done as Secretary of State? And by the way, and by the way, and by the way, and by the way, Kelly used the same Democrat tactic she once attacked. She used the war on women canard, which she put down in the past. In the past, Megyn Kelly, who I now call Mayhem Kelly, called it a so-called war on women. She was critical of the so-called war on women. Now it's suddenly a real war on women. The fact of the matter is, I don't think it affected Trump negatively. The fact of the matter is that the more Fox attacks him, the worse Fox looks. Their ratings may be up, but their credibility is down. And by the way, there was bigger news than the debate last night. You know what the news was? Charles Schumer certifiable liberal Democrat senator in New York City turned on Obama. Charles Schumer did the right thing. Charles Schumer listened to his conscience. Charles Schumer listened to his conscience and used his big brain and realized that the deal with Iran is a sellout for America and Israel. And I want to salute a Charles Schumer. And those of you who say it's a cynical move because he knows Obama will overcome the veto, I'm not so sure, number one. And number two, don't assume that Schumer did this simply out of a Machiavellian Uh, from a Machiavellian perspective. Many years ago, I opposed the Dubai port steal, something that my loyalist listeners know about. And do you know that Charles Schumer came on this program because he actually worked to, to stop Bush from turning over port security to our good friends in Dubai? Do you remember that, that situation? So Schumer probably has principle when it comes to things of this large nature. Nevertheless, let's go back to politics as usual. The issue is not Trump, it's Mayhem Kelly. The issue is not Trump, it's Meatball Jr. The issue is not Trump, it's Brett Baer who's destroyed himself as a journalist. And the issue now is, why is it that MSNBC and CNN are gloating over how well Fox did last night in the debate? Why is it that radical libs like Frank Brunei of the New York Times love the debate? Why is it that every anti-American progressive lout in the United States of America loved what Fox News did to the Republicans last night. And incidentally, you know, Marshall McLuhan, who was the genius on the media, wrote a book or an essay many years ago called The Medium is the Message. And we all learned from that. 
the minute the cameras opened up on the stage, I knew it was a setup. Before one word was uttered from um, Mayhem Kelly, I knew it was a setup. Why did I say that? Because who was stage left most prominently displayed for the world to see amongst all the Republican candidates? It was the overweight Chris Christie. His waistline was exemplified. So they set the whole thing up. But how much further do you have to go than the fact that there was a big F on the stage, on the screen, throughout the whole thing? It was Mark Zuckerberg. Mr. Undershirt was behind the whole thing. When have you ever heard of a man in favor of cheapening American wages and flooding America with illegal aliens, buying a network during the opposition's um, <clears throat> debates? When have you ever heard of this? Well, you just heard of it. What do you think the F stood for? Mark Zuckerberg joined forces with Fox News to undermine one Donald Trump and be the entire Republican ticket. And that was for one reason only. Because Zuckerberg is the greediest man in the history of the world. Zuckerberg wants cheap labor. Zuckerberg doesn't care who gets hurt. Zuckerberg just wants them in this country. And so, that's why Trump is the biggest threat to the status quo. The establishment is afraid of Donald Trump. I don't know whether Trump will be able to survive all of these attacks. I mean, he can survive it verbally, but can he survive it emotionally? A man who has been on top this long, a man who has always been able to defeat his opposition through his brains and his brawn, can only take so much rejection, especially when you have been accepted for so long. I have been on the outside for so long that it's starting to look like up to me. You got to understand, I've been vilified for 21 years in the radio for saying the very same things that Donald Trump's been saying recently on immigration. You could call me a pioneer in this regard. I did it long before Rush Limbaugh even knew how to spell the word. And the fact of the matter is, I have paid plenty for it. But I'm still here. But I got to tell you something, it's not easy being an outsider but I've lived with it so long that it becomes, as I say to you, a way of life. I don't think Donald Trump can withstand the psychological, how shall I put it, pressure of being an outsider. Because he's been an insider so long, and rightly so. Look what he's achieved. Look at the beautiful buildings he's built, incidentally. Look at the beautiful buildings he's built. Look at the golf courses he's built. He's produced stuff on the earth, as opposed to the journalists like Mayhem Kelly. So the Radlibs love Mayhem. Mayhem is now their Martha Washington, or shall I say their Mata Hari. She thinks she's Martha Washington for the Republicans, or shall I say the so-called conservatives who watch Fox News, but she really is now Mata Hari for the Democrats. Frank Brunei, New York Times, loved her. MSNBC loved her. CNN loved her. They went after every Republican candidate tooth and claw, and they didn't say one word about Obama. And what's interesting to me is that Bill Hammer is a better journalist than all of those on the main stage. I don't know if you saw the first hour of the debates last night where the so-called second-tier candidates were uh, grilled, let's say, and it was by a different group than uh, Megyn Kelly and her hit team. Uh, the fact of the matter is that they were asked real questions, and one of the key questions that the so-called second-tier Republicans was asked struck me as very valid. And it was set up against Obama, as it should have been. And here's what I think Bill said, Bill Hammer said. He said to Carly Fiorina and the others, one of the first things that Barack Obama did upon taking office seven, six years ago was write an executive order doing uh, so forth and so on. What would your first executive order be if there was one, if you became president? That was a valid question because it set things up the way we, the listeners, know they should have been set up. We know Obama's a, a damaging influence. So all of them gave a, a very intelligent answer, frankly. They were all, anyone on the second tier, by the way, anyone on the first tier, for that matter, would be a good president, incidentally, with the exception of a few who I'll get to. I think a few of them have shot themselves, done permanent damage. And I would say the number one damage last night, now that I'm moving into that category, I didn't mean to get there, was Curly. Curly shot himself in the foot. You know who I mean, don't you, Robert? You, you shook your head. The minute I said Curly, where'd that, where'd that Curly come from? They gave him a perm for this. He's nuts. Who gave the guy a... a, a it's like the Three Stooges. One of them was Curly, Moe, and Shemp or whatever. 
This guy looked like Curly. Like Zany, he actually acted out as his role of Mr. Zany. Uh, Cruz was a winner, big winner. Rational, smart, stood up to the uh, insults and assaults, but he can't win. And by the way, I'm telling you point blank, he just doesn't have the looks and the demeanor to, to win. I, I'm sorry. I'm an expert at these things. And the reason everyone's rallying behind Trump is because he does have the ability to win. And by the way, where are the debates on the Democrat side? Answer, there are none. Oh, and by the way, by the way, the most telling event of the night occurred right after the debate, right after the debate, when Flared Nostril Kelly did a special interview, which we have for you, and nobody else in the media seems to have seen it. But Flared Nostril Kelly was apparently told who to talk to right after the debates by Mark Zuckerberg. And wait until you listen on the Savage Nation. What do you? What did you think? Well, I, I, I'll tell you. After watching this debate tonight, um, I, I'm confident, uh, more confident than ever, that the Democratic nominee uh, will eventually become president of the United States. And I sort of feel for my counterpart, Reince Priebus, because it's pretty clear why they did everything they could to shrink the number of debates and shrink the exposure. Be uh, specific. That, like, what was it that jumped out at you? Well, join the Savage Nation. Call now. Eight five five four hundred. Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call eight hundred B U Y C O I N. Well, if I go by Drudge, which is a great group of people, or if I go by Time Magazine, I have to give myself an A. Or if I go by the New York Times, the front page of the New York Times, I have to give myself an A. How did I know that? You know, no, I was happy with the performance. Yeah. I I didn't know if I'd do well. I could, you know what? If I didn't, right, I'd say I got Donald a D. I got an F. On the uh, debate, and of course, if he went before the Savage Nation, he'd get an A. What more do you need to know than MSNBC and CNN and all of the other fronts for the CIA and the FBI uh, love the debate because they try to smear Donald Trump and the entire Republican Party? What do you need to know? When the midstream media loves what Mayhem Kelly tried to do and loves what Brett Baer did to his own career, we're not even mentioning Meatball Jr., who put on glasses to look intelligent, Charles Sauerkraut Hammer's sidekick, we're not mentioning Meatball Jr. because he didn't even show you. He didn't even show up on the scales. Charles Sauerkraut Hammer. I don't know what he's doing on Fox. Actually, I do know now. I always wondered why Charles Sauerkraut Hammer was on Fox News. Now I know why, because he is Fox News. He hates Republicans. That's why Sauerkraut Hammer is on Fox News. Fiorina was good. I loved uh, Ben Carson. I mean, he, he can't. He can't win. The guy is so smart. It's painful to watch him standing around the other people. Never forget who Ben Carson is. He's a pediatric neurosurgeon. You can't fake that. That's not community organizing. Pediatric neurosurgery is not the same as community organizing. You actually have to cut open skulls and fix the brains of children and babies. It's not community organizing. You can't use Al Sharpton in the surgical ward when you're opening up the brain of a baby. Ben Carson is as good as they get in the human family. I only wish there was a place for him somewhere on the major league ticket. But okay, that's not the main story. You know what the main story is. The main story is that Rad Libs love Kelly. The main story is, is that Megyn Kelly's credibility is completely shot, irrespective of how big her ratings may be and whether she gets patted on the, uh, I'm sorry, it's a family show, patted on the shoulder by Roger Ailes and Mur Murdoch, and she gets a raise for drawing so much attention and satisfying uh, Mark Zuckerberg so well. She may even get an invitation to fly on Mark Zuckerberg's jet out to California uh, to visit the, the Facebook factory and to see how her work has helped uh, repress wages so that illegal aliens can continue to flow into America and work for Zuckerberg. I mean, this is what it's all about, follow the money. There's nothing new under the sun. And I don't mean to be seen as misogynistic when I say things that the more she sells out, the wider her nostrils have become. But she's starting to look like that fellow, the congressman who's no longer in the Democrat Party, whose nostrils widened the longer he became a progressive. And the bigger progressive he became, the wider his nostrils became. It's something that you cannot control. And I am saying I saw it happening, the snorting. 
In fact, if you were to take Megyn Kelly's nose off of her face and remove it from her face, I, I'm doing something very important because I said to you, McLuhan taught me this, the medium is the message. If you were to Photoshop Megyn Kelly's nose off of her face, look at it in the beginning of her career, meaning at Fox, look at the size of her nostrils now, look at the size of her nostrils last night, now continue to Photoshop that nostril, that, those, that nose, and I want you to go back to an early cartoon of Beavis and Butthead. It was reminiscent of Beavis's nose. <laughs> One of my assistants who's in his 20s is laughing, and this guy never laughs at anything. So, yeah, she really stepped in it, and I don't care how much money she makes. She used the same damn, damn tactic. She once attacked the war on women. Poor little women. Poor little defenseless women. And then right after it was over, Zuckerberg probably told her who to uh, uh, talk to. She talks to the worst woman in the history of humanity. None other than the most vile woman I've ever seen in politics. I mean, I don't mind Democrats. They could be this, that. Boxer I despise because of a support for uh, infanticide. But this one? Wasserwoman Schultz from Florida? Va Debbie Wasserwoman Schultz is the archetypical I better be careful. It's, it, there's a new phrase for Debbie Wasserwurm and Schultz. There's nothing that could supersede her name itself. Her name itself has become uh, a, a noun. That's what it's become. Person, place, a thing, right? Well, it is a noun. No, her name has become a verb, which is it's a verb for something that you can't even describe better than by saying Wasserwurm and Schultz. That's a new verb for vile. It's longer, I admit. So Kelly goes and interviews Wasserwurm and Schultz and asks Wasserwurm and Schultz what she thought. Robert, play it now. What, do you, what did you think? Well, I, I, I'll tell you, after watching this debate tonight, um, I, I'm confident, uh, more confident than ever, that the Democratic nominee uh, will eventually become President of the United States. And I sort of feel for my counterpart, Reince Priebus, because it's pretty clear why they did everything they could to shrink the number of debates and shrink the right, exposure. Stop. That's unbelievable. The Democrats have no debates at all. None. Hillary is silent because she's so indict indictable. And look who Kelly talks to. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Now, that is not Megyn Kelly and Wasserwoman Schultz uh, after the debates. <coughs> that is the Beavis and Butthead... butthead. <laughs> cartoon for many years ago but I, i'm bringing it up for a reason look i'm a student of literature and in the victorian era uh, oscar wilde wrote a great play entitled the portrait of dorian gray and those of you who know literature know what i'm referring to and it was about a distinguished good-looking man and as he became corrupt later on in life his face changed but he didn't know it was changing and he only saw it in a portrait that was painted of himself and i am telling you that mayhem kelly is the portrait of dorian kelly and the more she has sold out, the wider her nostrils have become. In fact, my assistant during the break uh, did take her nose in the beginning of her career at Fox, remove it, put it on the screen, then took her nose last night, put it on the screen to the right. Then to the right of that, we put the Beavis and Butthead cartoon, and I'm correct. The further she has gone to the left, Martha Washington, the wider her nostrils have become. And she used the same propagandist tactics that she once attacked. She once sneered at the so-called war on women, saying it was a tactic used by the Democrats. Last night, she didn't use the word so-called. Suddenly, she was an injured little woman, identifying with all the downtrodden women. And she didn't ask one damn question about ISIS. She didn't ask one question of any substance. It was a hit piece from the get-go. And I gotta tell you something, women were so turned off by, by uh, Kelly, you wouldn't believe it. Women were turned off by what she did. You see, women can see through women. Forget about good looks and the hair and the, the nails. They looked at her and they said they couldn't believe what, what this woman was doing. And the giveaway was right after the debate, the fake debate. She interviews one of the most horrendous human beings on the earth, Wasserwoman Schultz of the DNC, or whatever she does now for the party and asks her what she thought about it and gives her a stage to say, well, this proves that uh, the Democrats are going to win. 
This proves that the Republicans are finished. This is a debate? It was a gigantic infomercial for Hillary Clinton funded by Facebook. Write it down. It was an infomercial for Hillary Clinton. And what's sickening here is that not one question was asked about Benghazi. Not one question was asked about the Clinton cash. Not one question was asked about her tragic relationship with the world as Secretary of State and how she mess messed up the entire world with her so-called Arab Spring. It's astounding that this went on. And it was a setup from the get-go. If you, in case you missed my opening, the medium is the message. Who did they put center stage left for the cameras, for the whole world to see? The unfortunately heavy set Chris Christie. I'm not mocking his waist. I have a weight problem myself right now from the stress I'm under. But you don't take a, a camera and put it on the guy who's got the biggest waist unless you're trying to make them all look like fat, old, white men. Do you understand what went on there? Do you understand how cameras work? And why did they bury Donald Trump where you couldn't even find him? I remember when my eyes scanned the entire field. All I was looking for was where they put Donald. I couldn't even see him. I couldn't distinguish him. There was poor. I saw Rand Paul because I saw the electroshock wig. That I saw sticking up. I said, who did his hair? Whoever did his hair should be fired. But that was ridiculous. And he looked zany and he sounded zanier. He sounded zanier because he attacked Trump, which was stupid. A few of them were very, very good. I have new respect for a whole bunch of them. And frankly, any one of them would be a better president than any Democrat. We all know that. Any one of them would do uh, much more to save America than any Democrat could possibly do, okay? Let's go to Jackie on WABC. Jackie, how are you today? What did you think of the debate last night? I have to tell you, Megyn Kelly is an absolute disgrace. This country is going to hell in a handbasket, and she puts a question to a man like Donald Trump pertaining to women or something that may have been said several years ago. What about the man who can bring this country back in where it belongs? He has the, he's not beholden to anyone in politics. He's financing his own campaign. The man is a successful man who took his father's business and made it a global empire who could do this country well, and this, this one, bro, this one goes at with this. Well, what, Megyn Kelly just didn't attack him. She then went after the second lead on the stage, which was Scott Walker, one of the top uh, figures, and she asked him a questions about abortion. No, it's a disgrace what they did last night. Really, and, then, and I'm disappointed in Brett Baird for starting out with raise your hand like you're in school who, who would if, you know, yeah remember i was law remember i was saying yesterday i expected her to play the middle i expected meatball jr to be the attack dog and i said brett bear i expect good things from no more brett bear's finished well, I was, brett bear was brett bear was given his marching orders by uh by the powers that be at fox news there's no question about it he has lost all credibility in my mind and what happened to chris wallace i couldn't believe what i was hearing and then to to, to follow up on you as well what is Megyn Kelly having the, the, the BCC there interviewing them and giving her a platform to praise the Democrats? I could how, come I'm, how come I'm the only one in the media who found that after uh, party party with her? Could you believe that? Uh, I, I'm, I have to tell you, I have the utmost respect for Donald Trump. I would work for him in a heartbeat. And I'll just share something with you very quickly. I held public office years ago when I lived in New York, and I know from whence I speak, it was in, during the Reagan years, it was wonderful. What we have come down to in this country, by the Republicans I've been calling Boehner's office and McConnell's office, and reminded them that it was the Second Amendment has to remain because it was the militia who did in the, the British under King George. I mean, all right, all right. Now, now we're getting far afield. The British right now are not coming. The British are going. I thank you very much, Jackie. The British are in retreat. There is no Britain anymore. There's no England anymore. WMAL, let's move down to Washington, D.C. for another caller on the Savage Nation. If you can to join the conversation, the phone number is 855 There, I just spoke in my normal cadence, the way I speak to Teddy when I'm off the air, in uh, the speed at which I used to speak in junior high school. We spoke much faster now. I have to, since I became a national host many years ago, I have to speak slower. In the year 2000, I had to learn to slow my speech down so that I could be heard by people in New Jersey. D on, on WMAL, welcome to the Savage Nation. D, what's on your mind? Thank you, Dr. Savage. You have been 100% correct about your prediction the other day 
with respect to the, this debate. And shame on the not so fair and balanced FTV. And uh, it's, it seems to me like Mr. Murdoch and Mr. Soros were palling around long before this debate ever took place. What well, let, let's talk about why Murdoch has thrown in with Hillary Clinton. I actually wrote about it in, in one of my recent books, and I don't remember. I can't even refer to the chapter. And I supported Murdoch in his battles. Murdoch is facing a very, very, a potentially devastating existential threat to his existence with a pending lawsuit over his head from the federal government. I don't know if you know about it. Yes, I do recall. And you do know about it, right. And my suspicion is, is that he's using his media empire to cover what's most important to all of us, which is first base, if you get the drift. I do. Thank you for the call. Right. And that's why this is happening. We think that this is happening in a vacuum. You're mistaken. So you could say there are big winners and big losers and you can pick them. Uh, my feeling is that if the election were held today, Trump wins 80-20 over Hillary. That's If there was actually an election today and it was a popular vote, Trump versus Hillary, 80-20 Trump. Because there aren't that many illegal aliens and government workers in the country. I think they comprise probably 20% of the, of the people who vote and no more. Now, if you look back at uh, uh, May Mayhem Kelly's history, she was on target with so many statements. She was talking about Obama planning to force communities that are too white and too privileged to embrace diversity. That was as near as June 11, 2015. She was right on, on uh, target. On the May 20th edition of Fox News, Kelly criticized Michelle Obama's commencement speech because she listened to the Savage Nation and she learned that it pandered to the culture of victimization. Okay. On the July 7th edition of Fox News' The Kelly File, Mayhem Kelly listened to the Savage Nation and she attacked Jeb Bush on the Mexican immigrant issue. When she said Jeb Bush is married to a Mexican immigrant, so how do you say he is hostile toward immigrants? On the May 26, 2009 edition of The Savage Nation, Kelly listened to the show and uh, she attacked Sotomayor. On the July 13th, 2009 edition uh, of The Savage Nation, she learned from me uh, how to deal with this issue of Sotomayor. And so all of a sudden she goes from the darling of the conservatives in America, and I call her affectionately Martha Washington, to Matahari, because she's become the exact opposite. And everybody knows that. The real loser here is Megyn Kelly. And I have to repeat, her ratings were high, the debate was high, but not because of her, not because she was so smart, not because Brett Baer was such a genius, not because Chris Wallace put on a pair of clear glasses to look intelligent for his big performance. You know, there was a remark a few weeks ago by none other than Al Sharpton who was trying to put down Donald Trump, which was amazing. I don't know who wrote this for him. But he said, he's like a performer from the Apollo Theater who's used to performing in the Apollo Theater, and he's not ready for the Lincoln Center. Now, of course, he was talking about himself. I mean, you talk about pure projection. That reminded me of what I saw last night. Uh, these moderators were ready for the Apollo Theater, not for a mainstream debate. This was a theater debate, and it was a disgrace, by the way. I'd like to see a real debate. I don't think I'm going to get that chance, because do you know what's coming up in September? Wait. You didn't hear about this? Take a guess what the Republicans have set themselves up for next. None other than Jake Tapperhead is going to be the moderator, so-called. Another Candy Crowley. It's Candy Crowley in a bad suit. It's Candy Crowley in a Robert Hall. Jake Tapperhead, an operative of the Democrat socialist Islamist machine, is going to be the moderator again? Yeah. So here we go again. Here we go again. If Megyn Kelly was cast in a movie by Harvey Weinstein, let's forget you know her as a broadcaster. If you were Harvey Weinstein and you were casting for a, a pretty southern waitress in a diner in one of those, in one of those, they, they, I don't know why these New York uh, movie makers seem to think that the fake southern accents sell. Nobody actually talks like that. It's like people imitate New York accents. They get a voice coach, coach from St. Louis who teaches them how to sound like they're from New York. But it's the same thing. They always have these southern accents that don't work. But if you were casting for a waitress in a diner somewhere, let's say, in Mississippi, could you find anyone better than Megyn Kelly? I, I don't think so. She's got, she's got the looks made for that part. Uh, okay, what do you want to talk about? Is there anyone attacking me yet? No, not yet. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, we got good callers here. I think what we should do right now before we take a break, it's only a minute long, Robert. Okay, camera opens. Christie's stomach is exhibited for the world to see fat, old, white Republican male. That's number one. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Your media team gets an A+. Plus. Give them a bag of jelly beans for this. Then the first question that goes out is this. Listen to this, Robert, right now. Is there anyone on stage, and can I see hands, who is unwilling tonight to pledge your support to the eventual nominee of the Republican Party and pledge to not run an independent campaign against that person? Again, we're looking for you to raise your hand now. Raise your hand now if you won't make that Sickling pledge Sickening little tonight. man you are. Mr. Trump. So, Mr. Trump, to be clear, you're standing... All right, hold it. Republican so the audience was... Hold it, hold it. They flew in a Facebook uh, workers audience. It was like a Communist Party USA flown in in undershirts. And they were told to boo every time Trump said anything. That's the audience. That was not the audience of America you listened to. Who picked the audience? Who were they? Do we know? How many of them worked for Facebook? We don't know. How many of them worked for Hillary Clinton? We don't know. Right away, he raised his hand. So you say, well, he fell into the trap. No, he didn't. He stole the show, by the way. What he did, he did exactly what uh, he should have done. He said, I want to run as a Republican, but if they shaft me, I'll run as an independent. That's what he should have said because he said it three or four times before. So he was consistent. He was very honest. I'll be back as the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hillary Clinton lies about Benghazi. She lies about emails. She is still defending Planned Parenthood, and she is still her party's front runner. 2016 is going to be a fight between conservatism and a Democrat party that is undermining the very character of this nation. We need a nominee who is going to throw every punch, not pull punches, and someone who cannot stumble before he even gets into the ring. That's Carly Fiorina, and she'd be a great candidate. And I would say a vice presidential candidate, not because she wouldn't make a good president. She would. We're talking about who could win. I think a Trump Fiorina ticket would be unbeatable, by the way. Just a correction, by the way, the portrait of Dorian Gray or the picture of Dorian Gray, which I referred to, was published in the July 1890 issue of Lippincott's Monthly Magazine. And I was using it as a reference to Megyn Kelly because the story is very telling. It's set in Victorian England. And it's a very handsome young man who was given a portrait of himself by an admiring artist. And soon after this, he treats a young woman cruelly and then notices that the painting starts to change in form. And he is no longer the good-looking man in the painting. He's quite ugly. Now, the analogy is quite useful here because although Megyn Kelly's looks may not have changed to herself, in her Cinderella mirror backstage, the cameras that we all watch are the is the portrait that I'm referring to. And the portrait of Dorian Kelly is quite revealing. You watch her face change. You will see it change over the coming months. Now that she is drunk on her own power, you will see what I see because I see things before anyone else. And I've told you what I've seen. The more she has sold out, the wider her nostrils have become. Almost poor sign as she snorts her insults at America. And the fact of the matter is she pretends to be the spokesperson for women. And she, with uh, Facebook, kept the one woman, Carly Fiorina, off the main stage. How does that work for you? In the next hour, sound you probably missed that only I heard. And your comments, of course, right here on the Savage Nation phone number, website, book, right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Is there anyone on stage, and can I see hands, who is unwilling tonight to pledge your support to the eventual nominee of the Republican Party and pledge oh, to not shame run on you, an Brett. independent campaign shame against on you. that person? Again, Ooh. I'm looking for you to raise your hand now. Oh, go back raise where you came from, you, won't you make midget that brain. Pledge tonight. You set up artist. Mr. Trump. Is, that's the Facebook audience. There. Mr. Trump, to be clear, the truck and the Facebook workers from California. Primary I fully understand. The place where the RNC will give the nominee the nod. I fully understand. And that experts say an independent run would almost certainly hand the race over to Democrats and likely another Clinton. You can't say tonight that you can make that pledge. I cannot say I have to respect the person that if it's not me, the person that wins. If I do win and I'm leading by quite a bit, uh, that's what I want to do. I can totally make that pledge. If I'm the nominee, I will pledge I will <laughs> not run as an independent. But uh, And I am discussing it with everybody, but I'm you know, talking about a lot of leverage. We want to win and we will win. But I want to win as the Republican. I want to run as the Republican nominee. So tonight you can't say if another one of these... What's wrong? Oh, Brett, okay. give it up already. He buys and sells politicians of all stripes. He's already hey, look, look. He's already hedging his bet on oh, the there, There's a curly okay? there. So if curly he doesn't run there. as a Republican, maybe he supports Clinton, or maybe he runs as an independent. Oh, that, okay, that's curly. That he's already hedging. All right, his you bet. get the drift of it. Curly popped up out of the woodwork. Uh, unbelievable. The big loser was Curly. The big winner was Trump. The big loser was Kelly. Brett Baer is finished. He now falls into the dustbin of of uh, journalism. I thought he was different. I really didn't. Mayhem Kelly, I already talked about Mayhem Kelly, the nostrils. I'm not going to do it again. The audience was filled with Facebook workers, no doubt, uh, flown in from the Facebook factory or to save a few uh, dollars. Maybe he took them in by some used Greyhound buses that he bought. Who knows? But it, it was it was and it was. Not one question aimed at Obama or Hillary. And Kelly used the same Dem tactics. She once attacked the so-called war on women. Meanwhile, a little news for you. An illegal immigrant held in the rape and the murder of an elderly California woman was on probation. One of two men charged in connection with last month's home invasion, rape, and fatal bludgeoning of a 64-year-old California woman was in the United States of America illegally and on probation. Victor Aureliano Martinez Ramirez, who was charged along with Jose Fernando Villagomez in the July 24th attack in Santa Maria, California, was on probation for committing battery against an unidentified woman on May 22nd, 2014, while in possession of methamphetamine. He had been charged twice this year for violating probation, once for possessing a concealed knife and the other for drugs. But a so-called judge in Santa Barbara allowed him to enter a substance abuse center in Santa Maria in lieu of jail. And guess what happened? Your USICE declined to issue an immigration detainer that would have required local authorities to hold him for deportation. And so he was let out and he beat Marilyn Farris with a hammer, sexually assault, assaulted her in the morning, and she died later. Ramirez fled but was tracked from the scene by a police dog to a nearby home. I guess soon the police dogs will be sent to diversity training for racial profiling. And they won't be able to track anyone unless they're a, uh, a certain uh, orientation. Victor Aureliano Martinez Ramirez and Jose Fernando Villagomez broke into the home, allegedly, of Marilyn Farris on July 24th, beat her with a hammer and raped her, and she died. Illegal immigrants held in rape, murder, California woman was on probation. Is any wonder that Donald Trump is uh, rising and the others are falling? KSFO, Dan, what have you had to say in the Savage Nation? Any comment is fair game. Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, I've appreciated uh, Donald Trump's directness for his campaign, but I guess I don't understand your, uh, your problem with Brett Baer's question, even though it was direct. It's a fair question, because if he goes third party, 
and does what Ross Perot did in 1992. And well, we know all of this. I asked Donald the same thing three weeks ago, if you heard the show. He said the very same thing he just said last night. He's been consistent, meaning he doesn't want them to, let us say, take him for granted. He doesn't want to be dismissed by the party apparatchiks. And he's warning them that uh, if they decide to dismiss him, he's going to run a third party campaign. He's fighting with them because he's warning them. And he's saying to them, don't throw me out of the party. I'd rather run with the party rather than against it. That's really what he's saying, uh, uh, Dan. Well, well, that reassures me to some, some degree, but it, it didn't come across that way last night because, forgive me, I didn't hear that, that show. No, because Brett Baer made it sound like it was either or. This is like Obama saying either you're for the Iran deal or you're for war. It's not either or. It's just that Brett Baer is using the same demagogic attack tactics that Obama's using now. He's making it sound like either you're for the Republican Party or you're against them. And Trump said, no, I want to run as a Republican. But if they dismiss me, I'll run against them. So he's warning them not to dismiss him. But if he does, and he's got many enemies in the Republican Party and does go third party, you know that's going to give the, the election to the Democrat Party. Well, I know that because I asked him the same question when he was on the show three weeks ago. And he gave the very same answer. He said, no, I'm a Republican. I always have been. And I want to run as a Republican. But if they throw me out and treat me that way, I will run as a third party. He's threatening them. Well, because I, had cons I still consider voting for him if he stays in the party. He's way ahead in the polls. Again, I like his direct approach. But if he does this third party thing for whatever reason, that is unpredictable. I know what you're saying is if he does the third party, it's going to split the ticket and Hillary wins. That's what you're saying. Yes. And that is definitely that is definitely a consideration. I don't know what he's liable to do if they do try to throw him out of the uh, candidacy, whether he would actually launch a third party campaign or not. I don't really know. But we'd have to wait and see. But at this point, he's trying to tell the Republican establishment not to treat him like a non-entity. You know, he's not just a talk show host that they can dismiss. This man has the power and the, and the audience right now to really run. I do hear what you're saying, Dan. I asked him the same question. I had the same concerns because people don't remember this. I had Ross Perot on this show back in the 90s when he did that, when he looked under the hood of a car and said, America's like a broken car that needs to be fixed. I loved the guy until I realized why Ross Perot ran a third party campaign. It was to throw the election to, um, to Clinton, I believe. And then I figured out why he wanted Clinton to win. Do you remember that, any of this? I don't know if you're a listener going back that many years. Do you remember any of that? I do. I remember when you started on KSFO. But one last thing, sir, with all due respect, I don't, think, I, I don't agree with the, the premise that Ted Cruz cannot win. If he is a nominee, he's too solid of a guy, too smart of a man, and he'll tear Hillary Clinton apart in, in the debates. He will. Win. I would vote. Listen to me. Don't get me wrong. I'd vote for Cruz if he was the ultimate nominee. But I don't think that he has the appeal of Trump. I don't think he has the demeanor nor the looks, frankly, and I, I'm very skilled at what looks. You know, look, let's face it. The presidency is also a popularity contest. It's not so much about ideas. The average person doesn't look beyond looks. Hillary is an extremely unattractive candidate, incidentally. They couldn't have picked the worst candidate than Hillary Clinton. I mean, she has used goods. She is guava on the jungle floor. This is a recycled tire that's about to blow any minute. I don't know how they could be even thinking that this woman could win. I think any Republican might beat Hillary Clinton, incidentally. It's not just looks, it's directness, and that's what makes Donald Trump so, so um, such an attractive candidate. I, I would say Kali Fiorina, to take it out of the, the uh, gender identity crisis that people are into. If it was Kali versus Hillary, Kali could win. Because she's smarter and she's she's more of an American. She has more of the values that the average American has right now than Hillary does. Hillary is hiding. What the heck does Hillary Clinton stand for other than Hillary Clinton? Can you explain that to me? Why is she such a viable candidate? She has an abysmal track record as a Secretary of State. She gave us the Arab Spring, which destroyed the Middle East. She's hiding the money. She's hiding Benghazi. How is this woman even a viable candidate were it not for the media? Well, Marco Rubio said it best, they don't have a good candidate. But uh, Cruz is very, very direct in his own way. And if he gets more traction, and more than this little soundbite, uh, high schoolish hour we saw last night, Cruz will gain some traction. All right, I hope you're right. Cruz is a smart man and a good man. And I don't have to say any more about it. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I feel that the big loser was Paul uh, Curley. For him to jump in like that and try to upstage Trump, just he just didn't look good. And I think that he was, if anyone lost, it was Curly. It's that simple. Now, the, the you know, we have to go down the list and play some of the sound that nobody got uh, for us. So I have such great callers today. The sourpuss Kramer.
Sour crowd hammer, sour puss crowd hammer, again attacked um, Trump because he's jealous of him. The fact is, you know that. Sour crowd hammer once attacked me out of jealousy. He knows I'm a better man than him uh, with a more loyal audience. He knows that. So who does he attack now? The so-called conservative genius, the so-called intellectual genius, sour crowd hammer. Listen to this post-debate comment by the saddest, most sour man in the history of the media on clip 17. The real story is, is the collapse of Trump in this debate. It, uh, the fact uh, is it's the he collapse of, of sour place. crowd. And when you think about it, when he's free form, when he's uninterrupted, when he can do the uh, the flight of ideas, yeah, when he right, can right, right. go on on his own and ramble, he's, he's entertaining, he's mm -hmm. sharp, and uh, he's actually amusing. Hey, but here, when he was smarter than you are. in the tight setting, he was lost for most of the debate. And All right, I think you it the picture. Why don't you have the the guts, the big the big guts there to say the same thing about Obama, Krauthammer? You big mouth when it comes to Trump. Why don't you say the same thing about Obama, you big shot you, you phony you. I'm the only one who'll take you on. Everyone's afraid to say a word about you for obvious reasons. Well, I'm not. I'm sick of this entire pack of jackals at, at Fox News. They are the CNN of today, by the way. I said this a while ago. You know, many of you are wondering why I was banned from Fox. This is not a personal thing to me. I could care less. I've survived without them. They've survived without me. We don't need each other. That's obvious. But I want to tell you something. I've asked myself for years, why am I banished from Fox News? There was a time I used to be, uh, they would run after me because I brought them a huge audience, a tremendous spike in, uh, in, in ratings. Why have I been banned from Fox News, I ask myself. Well, you don't have to go any farther than what you saw last night. I don't fit the agenda. I don't fit the agenda of... Uh, of what whatever they're pushing here and they're not pushing conservatism that we know it's the opposite of it so they have become today it, it, there's been, been a movement in the media in, in the media altogether fox today is cnn of five years ago cnn today is msnbc of five years ago and msnbc today is the uh, cp usa of today i'll be right back Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You know, the question on the women, I didn't say many of those things. I, they said something and they were giving out some words and I don't remember that on The Apprentice and I don't remember, I don't know where they got some of these words, to be honest with you. In fact, I'm going to have somebody call up and find out where these words came from because I don't recognize those words. Not that I'm an angel, by the way. I, I just don't think it's very professional. I do say this. If you're going to do that to me, I think it's great, but you have to do it to everybody else or ease it up. But you can't do it to Trump. I mean, I walked out of that room and people were saying that was really unfair. Well, when you play it unfair and you're a, you use demagoguery, as Mayhem Kelly did, you get big ratings. She has now exceeded uh, uh, Jenner. What's the Jenner's new name? I forget name. Carlina? I don't know what her name. Carlita? Caitlin. She's drawing bigger than Caitlin did. That's the main thing. I mean, she outdrew Caitlin. The reality show, the reality show of Megan Kelly, y'all drew Caitlin. I am Caitlin, as now I am Megan. My, I, I from I am Caitlin to I am Mayhem. A whopping twenty-four million people watched the variety show, the reality show called I Am Mayhem, uh, last night, nine p.m. Eastern, to just past eleven p.m. Eastern time. Mayhem drew seven point. I am Mayhem drew seven point nine million in the A twenty five to fifty four demo. This is the highest non sports cable program of all time, the highest rated cable news program of all time, and Fox News's most watched program ever. So it proves again that if you go lower than I am Caitlin, you get a bigger audience. And so now we have I am uh, Mayhem, which is outdrawing I am Caitlin. The five p.m. Eastern uh, time debate with the seven lower tier candidates, did very well for Fox News as well. It drew 6.1 million total viewers and 1.2 million in the demo, making it the third highest primary debate ever on cable. So again, you've got to see that going to the gutter and attacking candidates who could save America makes money. And that's exactly why Facebook makes so much money. That's exactly why Facebook was the co-sponsor of uh, the new reality show, I Am Mayhem. WABC, Frank, what did you think last night? You're on the Savage Nation. I want to say 
it's no surprise you got seven. Hey, what? Okay, please, uh, you know, lay off the sauce, would you please, before calling the show? You, you can clean up for the few minutes before. You know, just take a coffee or something. Get a little Nespresso going before you get on the air. You know, you clean up the act before. Uh, WABC in New York, WSBA, WKCMO, MAL, KSFO. Chuck on KSFO, go ahead, you're on the Savage Nation. Savage, my hero. Hey, I, I think... Uh, Trump could carry a third party. I believe the times have changed since Perot did it, and I believe he could carry a lot of Democrats and Republicans. Now, that's a very intriguing idea, which I have not explored. Democrats know that Hillary is not a good candidate. I have spoken to people who consider themselves liberals who will not vote for her. They hate her. They know that she's a greedy nobody, and they don't want another eight years of the Clintons. I've heard this over and over again from liberals. They might just go for Trump. I, I know this. And by the way, I predicted this a few weeks ago to turn out to be true. Remember I said that even Hispanics would vote for Trump because if you work hard and you save your money, you want a businessman to run the economy, not another socialist to take it from you. And every poll shows that most Hispanic voters would vote for Trump. His poll numbers are very high amongst Hispanics. One thing I know about the Hispanic community is they love winners. Donald Trump is a winner. Uh, Hillary Clinton is, a, is frankly, a, uh, I don't want to put her down. I don't have to say any more than I've said. She's not a viable candidate. Certainly not as viable as him. So your main point might be true, Chuck, which is that a third party just might pull it off this time. I think also when Bear asked him that, he could have told him that the so-called experts also picked McCain two cycles ago, and they picked um, Romney last cycle, and they were both losers. Chuck, let me ask you something. Do you feel it, that Brett Bear has lost credibility as a result of the hit piece? Absolutely, because, just because of that. And do you have less respect for Mayhem Kelly now? I think, I think many women despise her now. No respect at all. No respect at all. And do you agree with me that the nostrils have widened as she's become more and more demagogic? Absolutely. If you study the nostrils when she began and now, you see the portrait of Dorian uh, uh, Gray. You see it right there. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Uh, being a seasoned social observer and watching what happened last night, so the highest rated show in history, but it wasn't about the moderators it was about the fact that america is in such horrible shape that america was looking for someone to hang their hat on most particularly trump drew the audience make no mistake about it it wasn't megan kelly it was donald trump that got the ratings not her don't don't get fooled here and as i said uh, before we've gone from i am caitlin to i am megan what's interesting to me is that there's a little truth in that what is caitlin about about a transgender right now we're watching a trans political. We've seen Megyn Kelly go from a, uh, a putative conservative to a demo. Not even a dem. She just became a demo, a demographic. So there's a trans political show like the other show, Caitlyn. And I suspect that, yes, the ratings were great, but to see what she did and to see what Brett Bear has become, uh, I don't think in the long run is going to do Fox any good. The ratings were about Donald Trump. The ratings were about hope for America in this age, this dismal, horrendous, cynical, depressive age of what this man, Barry, has done to this country. Barry from Hawaii has ruined the world and ruined America. Never forget that. And never forget the fact that Fox News viewers watch Fox as the only alternative to what Barry is doing to this country and the world. And so, of course, they're going to all make sure they watch the debate because they want to see who can defeat the Barry machine. Who can defeat the Hillary machine? And so they got their money's worth. So don't don't assume that it was because of her blonde hair that everyone was tuning in. Okay? And I can guarantee you as I stand here that in the long, long run, her credibility, which has taken a serious hit amongst women, is going to reflect itself in the ratings. That's my opinion. Debbie, KKOB Radio, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you very much. What's on your mind, Debbie? Debbie, are you there? One, two, three. No Debbie. Okay, we'll go to the next caller. 
WSBA Radio. Daryl, you're the next up on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Michael, Megan was uh, so caught up in her gotcha moment with Trump last night, she didn't even realize the flaw in her war on women argument. On one hand, she argued that Trump propagates the war on women because of things she said. Meanwhile, she's arguing that Hillary is somehow angelic and a victim of the war on women, but she failed to realize that Hillary, her, the only successful thing she's ever done in her career was to run the war on, or the uh, bimbo eruption campaign for her husband for things that he did to women. Well, you know, you could look at it that way, but the fact was, all of these tough moderators never say a negative word about Hillary Clinton. Have you noticed that Fox News is in with Hillary? See, you got to see the big picture. Murdoch owns the network. It's not a public trust. It's a private enterprise. And the owner of the company certainly dictates some of the policies and some of the opinions. I know for a fact from the inside that one of the reasons they're soft on illegal immigration is because the owner of the company is soft on illegal immigration. That's number one. Number two, I know for a fact that Fox News has already given over to the Hillary campaign. Everybody on the inside knows that for a fact. So I'm not surprised by what happened last night. I was, what I was surprised by was the ugliness of Brett Baer, the smallness of Brett Baer. I was surprised by the meanness of Megyn Kelly. I was surprised by the limited intellect of Megyn Kelly and the lack of intellect of Brett Baer. I don't even count Chris uh, Walachensky in this puzzle. I expected nothing more or nothing less uh, from him, by the way. This was not a debate. This was not a debate at all. This was a frontal assault on the Republican Party to make certain that Hillary Clinton, the worst candidate possible in the history of America, uh, wins the presidency. That's all it was. And that's why many of you tuned in last night. We'll have to see. Time will tell whether or not this holds. But my opinion is, is that they damaged themselves. And there was nothing more telling to me than what happened after the debate. Who did um, um, Caitlin, I mean, Megan go to after the debate? Who did she immediately interview? None other than the worst woman in the history of American politics, one of the meanest, most horrendous anti-Americans I've ever seen. None other than the Trojan horse, Vasa Woman Schultz from the DNC, listen to this incredible back and forth, allegedly, it's not a back and forth, by the way, it's a megaphone for this monster, Vasa Woman Schultz of the Democrat Party in clip number one. What, do you, what did you think? Well, I, I, I'll tell you, after watching this debate tonight, um, I, I'm confident, uh, more confident than ever, that the Democratic nominee uh, will eventually become President of the United States. And I sort of feel for my counterpart, Reince Priebus, because it's pretty clear why they did everything they could to shrink the number of debates can you and this? shrink the exposure. Uh, that can it, you believe what this? Was it that shrink? Out of well, the misogyny. She's asking her what I mean, jumped to, out to at her. I mean, after your question uh, initially to Donald Trump, and and the obvious misogyny that he engaged in in his response. Oh my Not God. a single one of the other Republican candidates uh, criticized him, you know, commented, oh you know, talked about the importance of making sure that women actually have access to Again, a poor little or, woman, uh, Vasa Woman Schultz. Work. Um, you know, oh, come the, off it, the little woman. The 2012 election. The oppressed woman, you know, the Vasa Woman. The chairman of the RNC said, you know, we need to appeal to you know, a broader base of constituency groups. There and we go again. Tonight right, on that stage, not a single one of them oh, did that. Right, in fact, right. you they know alienated so much. Right. Hispanics, women. Here we go I, I again. Mean, it's, it's just unbelievable that yeah. the Republicans See, she lets it go on. This is Megan's setup. to focus on the thing that's the most important to Americans, <laughs> reaching the middle class and focusing on creating oh, jobs please. and getting this economy. Talk about that a bit. Wait, well, you, was there anybody Not in there? terms of how uh, people Okay, you get the, the drift. I can't even listen to this. I'm sorry. Megan Kelly turned the entire stage over to the enemy of the Republican Party, Vasa Woman Schultz. Do I have to say any more? Do you see the hands of Zuckerberg all over this, the slimy hands of Zuckerberg who owns Facebook? Do you feel the sweat of uh, Zuckerberg's little palm on Megan's back? Do you see what went on? Am I the only one who sees this? This was not a debate. This was a frontal assault on the Republican Party, most especially Donald Trump, by Megyn Kelly. This is what it was. It's an embarrassment for me to even have to explain this to you. That sh the giveaway was Megyn 
talking to Vasavum and Schultz immediately after, sitting like a meek little church mouse, letting her hold the floor and put down the entire debate and frame the entire debate, by the way, as misogynistic, anti-minority, anti-woman, anti-little person, not middle class. You mean Obama's for the middle class? You mean Hillary Clinton is for the little person? It's astounding to me that I have to do this for you, but okay. I watched it all. I saw it all, and I know what's going on. And we have gone to a new low in American politics. We have gone, as I said, from I am Caitlin to I am Megan. And it's not a pretty picture to watch uh, a woman become a trans political right in front of our eyes. Carolyn on KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, I felt angry whenever Megan asked Trump the question. And, but his answer was so point on. He just said Rosie O'Donnell, and the whole crowd laughed. If he would have stopped there, it would have made some points for him. But he put his foot in his mouth, I think, by trying to explain what he said. Well, whatever you say, he emerged stronger than before. My opinion is they saw what the people themselves saw what Megan and company were trying to do to him. They saw it as a hit job. And again, I have to go back to this. Why was there no attempt to expose before this massive audience all the damage that Obama has and has done to this country and the world? Why was that not an issue? Why were there no questions about what Barry is doing to the country and the world? Yeah, well, I think that they should have said, what would you do? What, what could you do to improve America? Where was that question? You know, well, they could have said, what will you do to undo the damage that Barry has done and is doing to America and the world? WABC, Bob, you're up on the Savage Nation. What's your point? Go ahead, please. Yes, Mike, you're ahead of your time. You know, the first question by Brett there to raise hands, and that was a trap. And, you know, I didn't really put the two and two together like you did with Facebook and Zuckerberg. But right. You saw an F on the screen the whole time, right? Exactly. And you know what? You know, Trump handled it massively, right? You know, not only did was he, you know, truthful and consistent, like when he was on your show, but, you know, one of the key things is he held his ground. And that's not... That's right. Listen, I got to tell you something. I could never, ever have done what he did, given the frontal assault against him, the entire setup by Facebook and uh, um, whatever it's called, Fox News, was aimed only at Trump and to take him down. They wanted to take down the leading two candidates, him and Cruz, by the way. Did you see the attack on Cruz as well? Oh, uh, yes. But can I just finish something on Trump? I think he was a gentleman there, too. Because let me tell you, Mike, what all conservatives are most concerned about is we don't want another Bush on the ticket. Right? And Trump... I, ag I agree. We don't want another... Why don't we want another Bush on the ticket? Let's explain that. Why? Why don't you want to well, let's be clear. Why don't you as a listener want another Bush on the ticket? I know why I don't. But go ahead. Tell me why you don't. Well, I don't want another Bush on the ticket because we don't need another rhino. We've had people go over to we give them the Congress. We give them the Senate and they turn their back on us. And Bush one didn't follow through. Bush two. There were some things he did well, but he clearly was not for smaller government. And Bush three. Forget it. There's more. There's more people in, in this country than, than just a Bush clan or a Clinton clan that we need to go to. Yes, right. We don't need a dynastic presidency. And both Bush and Clinton represent a dynastic presidency. And so you make a good point. And you, you, you're you happy with how Trump handled himself? I, look, I, I wish Trump would have been a little bit more... Would have just said to to everyone, look, the reason I'm not committing is because... When we send people to Washington with the Republican logo and then they turn their back on us, like they did in Congress and the Senate, that's, they're not going to get our support. He's okay, well, point well taken. But look, let me summarize at this juncture on the Savage Nation. What more do you need to know than the New York Times, MSNBC, and CNN gave glowing reviews to the two-faced Megyn Kelly. What more do you need to know than the most uh, uh, anti-American people in America, in the media for that matter, loved what Fox did to skewer or attempt to skewer Trump and the Republican Party? You don't need to know any more than that. That tells you everything. And if that still doesn't convince you that this was not a debate but a setup, I played for you Megyn Kelly's interview right after the debates with the uh, opponent of the Republican Party, Vasavum and Schultz, who she didn't challenge at all, not one second. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You once told the contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? And how will you answer the charge from Hillary Clinton, who is likely to be the Democratic nominee, that you are part of the war on women? The big oh problem. God. Okay, 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 okay. Turn him off. This was not a debate. It was an inquisition. And the torturer, the chief torturess, was Mayhem Kelly. Now, there's an article just came out by Brandy Roderick, who was the Playboy Bunny in question. She defended Trump. She doesn't even remember get on your knees comment. During the GOP debate last night, Mayhem Kelly brought up the season of Celebrity Apprentice when Donald Trump told Brandy Roderick, quote, it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Well, now the Playboy Bunny Roderick is defending Trump, saying she doesn't even remember him making the comment in the first place. Kelly said, your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. Do you see how far she has fallen? Why has she not talked about Hillary Clinton's missing emails instead of Donald Trump's Twitter account when he was in the entertainment business? Why was she not talking about the missing emails or Benghazi or the Clinton cash or her acts as Secretary of State uh, when she created the Arab Spring, which has been such a disaster for the entire Middle East and the world for that matter? Why did she focus instead on an obscure Twitter account uh, remark that may not even exist. Answer, this was not a debate. This was an inquisition conducted by Roger Ailes at the behest of his boss, Rupert Murdoch, in my estimation. It's that simple. Now let's go to the callers and see what you have to say about this abysmal attack on uh, Donald Trump and the Republican Party by the new transpolitical, Megyn Kelly. Where are we? Kathy, Ida. Okay, Ida. On WVNN Radio, Ida, thank you for calling the Savage Nation. Your opinion counts. Go ahead, please. My opinion is what makes them think that we, the voters, are going to vote for Jed Bush or anybody else if Donald Trump get a, doesn't have a third party. That's just like taking us for granted. If he just don't have a third party, they're going to all walk in lockstep. That's not going to happen. We are not going to vote for anybody. And if the crew of us, that's black in Alabama, we will not vote for anybody but Donald Trump. I don't know what makes them think that assumption. That wait, wait, wait. Are, are you saying, well, I'm, wait, I hold it. You're saying you would vote for Trump even if he ran as a third party candidate? I would vote for him. He is the only one. In order to win the presidential way, they have messed it up so bad, you got to have a street fighter. He can't just be educated. He's in, in talk night. He's got All right, wait, so what I'm hearing is you like Trump, right? That's what you're saying. I love him. He's hey, wait, are, you, are you normally a Democrat voter, Ida? Big part, no, uh, I'm, not, I'm not. He's the only hope. For, I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, no, I hear, I hear what you're saying, and this is unusual because you just said uh, you. I think you said we black women in Alabama. Did I hear that right? Correct me if I'm mistaken. That's correct. And and, and, you, and you like Trump because he's a man, because he's masculine, because he shows the signs of being. A, he is a man, as opposed to the other party animals, the the little uh, the little yappers, the little yappers there who say what they're told to say by handlers who write the speeches for them. So you like the plain truth, even if it's sometimes uncomfortable. Right, because bingo, end the story. Thank you. That, that you know, you just heard it in one caller. Something that all the pundits have not told you. You don't know that Donald Trump is polling very high amongst Hispanics and polling high, very very high amongst blacks. But you see, the whole thing last night was aimed at destroying the credibility of Donald Trump with women in general, because they know he's polling very high with women. So they used Mayhem Kelly to try to undermine him with women, bringing up this salacious so-called Twitter remark from years ago, which the Playboy bunny that it was allegedly aimed at says 
she never saw it and that he was a gentleman. So why is Mayhem Kelly obsessed with this issue of a woman being on her knees? I don't know. What is this about? Of all the things in the world, this is all that's on her mind? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. How would you destroy ISIS in 90 days? Megan, we need a commander-in-chief that speaks the truth. We will not defeat radical Islamic terrorism so long as we have a president unwilling to utter the words radical Islamic terrorism. When I asked General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, what would be required militarily to destroy ISIS, he said there is no military solution. We need to change the conditions on the ground so that young men are not in poverty and susceptible to radicalization. That, with all due respect, is nonsense. It's the same answer the State Department gave that we need to give them jobs. What we need is a commander-in-chief who makes clear, if you join ISIS, if you wage jihad on America, then you are signing your death warrant. You don't see it as an ideological problem? An ideological, ideological problem, problem in addition to a military one. Ideological problem. Maybe of course it's an ideological problem. That's one of the reasons why I introduced the Expatriate Terrorist Act in the Senate that said if any American travels to the Middle East and joins ISIS, that he or she forfeits their citizenship so they don't use a passport to come back and wage jihad on Americans. Yes, it is ideological. And let me contrast President Obama, who at the prayer breakfast essentially acted as an apologist. He said, well, gosh, the Crusades, the Inquisitions. All right, we got it. Ted Cruz is a big winner. Kelly is a big loser. And Trump is another big winner. Welcome to Hour 3 of the Savage Nation. In Mayhem Kelly, we have seen a transformation. We have seen a trans-political. We've gone from I am Caitlin to I am Megan in one television show. This is a woman who uh, was allegedly a conservative all these years where she built her reputation and when she was asked to, let us say, throw a knife into the heart of Donald Trump and the Republican Party, she was just too glad to do it. And there's no better evidence, not only on her frontal assault on Donald Trump, on women's issues and whatnot, in fabrications, incidentally, but who she interviewed the minute the debates so-called were over. She turns to none other than this this creature from the Black Lagoons of Florida, Wasserwoman Schultz, and gives her the floor to not only discuss the debates, which didn't occur, but to shaft every Republican as though they were all terrible and only Hillary Clinton is a viable candidate. No, my friends, this was a very, very sad night, despite the high ratings, and I think that in the long run, Fox News is going to take a huge hit for this. Joni on WDRC, you're first up in hour number three. What do you think after all is said and done? Hi, Michael. Um, I just want to let you know that I have been watching Fox since they came into existence over 20 years ago. And I have watched Megyn Kelly every night since she has been on. And I feel <laughs> betrayed, so betrayed that I cannot believe it that she would do that to Donald Trump. Matter of fact, when I was watching, I had my hand on the remote because I had a feeling that this was a setup, and I, I really felt bad for Donald. I really did, because I think he's really sensitive, and he really, you know, he really can come back with a lot, but I think in the long run it kind of hurts him inside, and I felt bad for him. And I heard earlier that day that she had a strategy to deal with him if he got out of line. And I'm saying, why didn't she have a strat? You know, why didn't somebody else, why didn't she say that about any of the other uh, people that were up there? And why doesn't she attack Hillary Clinton with the same uh, guts, for example? Right. Why are they so tough on the Republicans when they're supposed to be on the Republican side? Why did they make them squirm instead of making Barry squirm or Hillary squirm? 
I know. I don't think I could even watch it. I will definitely never watch her anymore. And this is just a little side note for you. That's not her blonde hair, by the way. That is a, an extension and a wig. Megan Kelly has about seven hairs on her head. Well, that I don't know, but I, I did make an observation about her nostrils changing, and I didn't do so to be mean. I did it because I've watched it happen. The meaner she has become and the more she has transformed into what she has probably always been, her nostrils have widened. Have you observed the same thing? Absolutely, and her chin's longer. So, and another thing is about the Wasserman Schultz. Was that to say, how did I do? Did you like it? Do I? Did yeah, I think you're going to see. I think you're going to see Megyn Kelly invited to the White House to the next White House dinner. I think she will soon be in the esteemed company of Al Sharpton. I think she's moved up that high that she'll soon be invited in with uh, Al Sharpton and the other rabble. Thank you for the call. I don't know what's going to happen, uh, but I know that the callers know what is happening. That's why they're calling uh, the Savage Nation the most exciting show in the history of radio. Mike on KSFO in my hometown of San Francisco. Thanks for calling. Line 4, you're up. What's on your mind today, Mike? I just want you to know, Michael, that you are really deeply on to something. You are touching on the tip of an iceberg when you start to talk about this involuntary reflex that people's faces take on as they change. And it isn't as gradual as many people would tend to think it is. The uh, reason I'm qualified to say this is that I've been doing facial portraits since I was 13. I'm 73. That's 60 mm. years of accurate facial drawings I've made. Mm -hmm. All right, so when I sarcastically said that the more she has sold out, the wider her nostrils have become, she's looking almost porcine. Then I compared her nose. If you remove her nose from her face uh, on a computer screen and you put it next to the old Beavis and Butthead noses, I saw a shocking resemblance. It's just her nose, Michael. It's all over her entire image. It's body wide. Her complexion is changing. Her forehead is changing. Her chin is changing. It's it, you. You're talking about nostrils. You are on the tip of an iceberg here. I've been doing this. You don't want to play poker with a guy like me. I'll tell you that. I've been able. Oh, to man, well, because you, you're, you're you're a portrait artist who can read faces. Absolutely. I'm. I'm and you, you. Okay. No. No. Go on. This is interesting. I am not a portrait artist, by, but I am a keen social observer. Her face has changed, and this should be about her. She is the new villain of the conservative movement. She is not as popular as the ratings may indicate. Those ratings were relating not to her, but to Donald Trump's appearance. Everybody wanted to see how he would do. That's not what they tuned in to see her. Only recently I started tuning in to reading her face because my wife reacted negatively after seeing her over time. And I started to take a closer look. And believe me, she has altered her appearance. It's an involuntary reflex. Everybody does this, Michael. Everybody. Well, I, I hate to look at myself in the mirror. I haven't looked at myself <laughs> in 30 years. <laughs> I tend to shave without looking into a mirror. That's why I have a beard. Observation. <laughs> For what it's worth, you, there are 17 people on stage yesterday. I know who is the most honest of them. Who? Ben Carson. And I, oh, I loved it. I love that man is such a he is a distinguished human being. Is he, isn't he great? That man is wonderful. I, I, whether he's qualified to be president or not, he is not never going to be other than a truth teller. No, he's a wonderful man, and I really like watching Ben Carson. But, but let's go back to you being a portrait artist. When I refer to the portrait of Dorian Gray, you immediately knew what I was referring to, correct? Absolutely. I'm as good as the best the FBI has in their toolbox. So you what you do faces that you do faces that wait you do faces that well, Michael. When I was thirteen, I picked up an Eberhard paper, yellow wooden pencil, number two. I was doing photographic, photorealistic portraits of people before as an expert. Before uh, I, I, I want, I want to hire you to do. I want to hire you to do my portrait. So before you leave, hold on now. Uh, Jim, get Mike's email. I have to, you know, commission a portrait of myself. And then I'm going to look at it in a few years and see if my nose or my eyes have changed. But before you go, wait, you're a, a keen guy on portraits. Mike, tell me now and be very honest, has Trump's face changed as well? Trump, Trump's, Trump's face is, everybody's face is changing. It depends on which direction it's going for you to be able to read a person's character. Okay, so how, is Trump, how has Trump's character changed, according to you, a portrait artist? He's become harsher over time. He's become more, um, uh, how do you want to put this? He's become hardened. 
Uh, he's become the quintessential. He was always his self image has always been the quintessential deal maker. You can see it by the turn of his uh, up, uh, bottom lip and his upper lip. Uh, <laughs> He's a very well, I'm not listen. I'm listening to you. So you've seen him change over the last few months since he's got seriously into the candidacy. He's around, Michael. He's easy to read. And like I say, with me, I, I don't play poker because I'm an honest guy. I could take advantage of people at a poker table. You don't want to be at a poker table near me. OK. Have you seen my face anywhere in any pictures? Yeah, you sent me a book about uh, 10 calls back. <laughs> uh, OK. And how, how do you read my face? You're an honest man. Yeah, in fact, you 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 have a tremendous amount of intellectual insight. I, I really am fascinated by your th thought processing, and uh, your face your face is excellent because you're insightful. You you are a student of of human beings. Well, I can't say I disagree with you, <laughs> but uh, listen, Mike, stay on the line. Where do you live, by the way? What part of California? Petrol Hill. Oh, you're you're in the heart of Nancy Pelosi's backyard. God forbid. Nine four one zero seven, Mike. <laughs> uh, oh my God! Well, you stay in the line. I'm going to definitely meet you. I'm going to let you paint me, and then over time, we're going to see how my face changes. It's going to be the portrait of Dorian Savage soon. Uh, you know what really got me f <laughs> agitated? I don't know. There's something about Vasavum and Schultz that drives me up the wall. I get crazy listening to her. She is perhaps the most. Uh, let me let me use the correct word. I would say not crude, vulgar. She's a vulgar woman. When I listen to Vasavum and Schultz. She reminds me of all the relatives I ran away from in New York 50, 40 years ago. I mean, I don't mean anything by it. I ran away from New York to get away from women like Wasserwoman Schultz. So when I hear Megyn Kelly turn to her right after the so-called debates and say, what did you think, and gives her the floor to put down the Republicans, I was shocked, by the way. And the first thing Wasserwoman Schultz says is, oh, that's why the Republicans limited the debates. Is she kidding? Has there been one Democratic debate? There is no debate. There is no debate. It's a one-party system. It's like the Soviet Union. They've anointed Hillary Clinton, for God's sakes. Who is she kidding? All right. I think I made my point. Hawking predicts the biggest event in human history. He said, we've witnessed a perfect storm of technological advancements that brought us to this point. And uh, Mr. Hawking, Dr. Hawking, predicts the biggest event coming in human history. Uh, another guy, another great stock market watcher, says that we have reached the point of no return and it's about to blow. You know, I'm watching these apocalyptic statements, and frankly, I'm not changing my lifestyle one iota. I'm still ordering takeout food, I'm still playing with the dog, and I'm still getting up to do the Savage Nation every day. What should I do to change my life over predictions like that? The good news is this, are you ready for this? This was, uh, this was apocalyptic for Obama. Barry got a big defeat last night, the biggest defeat I've ever seen. Charles Schumer, turned on him. Charles Schumer turned on him on the Iran nuclear deal. Nobody expected that. Nobody. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the uh, Savage Nation. Look, you're listening to the show to vent. Many of you are very, very upset seeing what Fox News tried to do but failed, by the way, to achieve, not only against Trump, but the entire Republican ticket. Never forget what they did. They tried to destroy the Republican Party by reverting to stereotypical questions about women, rape, this and that, sexism, abortion, God, you heard what she was doing, all of them. They're no different. Okay, we know that. But I don't think they succeeded. The subtext of this will be lost on you unless you recognize what the F on the screen represented. Throughout the debate, you saw a large F to the right of your screen. Did you not? I did. I watched it for an hour and a half. What is the F for? Facebook. And who was in the audience cheering and booing? Facebook workers, no doubt, from the Facebook factory. Who is Facebook? Who owns Facebook? What are their politics? Zuckerberg owns Facebook. Why was he chosen as a sponsor when he has such a bias uh, against strong immigration policies? Doesn't that tell you everything you need to know? Why would they partner with a guy like Zuckerberg who marched arm in arm with illegal aliens a few months ago demanding that we have open borders 
And why would a billionaire like him want open borders? Well, because he wants cheaper workers. Certainly the women and children coming in from Honduras and El Salvador are not going to work for Facebook. I get that. <clears throat> but all of the Indian workers that he has on his payroll who have replaced American workers at about half the price are certainly part of the quotient in Mark Zuckerberg's desire for open borders. And if you check out Facebook and you look at his board of directors and you look at his legal team, you will see a large number of folks from India on his legal team. Nothing wrong with that. I've always supported people from India. Yeah, people from India know that. They know that going back 10 years. But I don't support illegal immigration from anywhere, especially when uh, the illegal immigrants are willing to work for half the price of American IT workers, just to stuff the pockets of a multi-billionaire. And that's why, unless you recognize that the F on the screen last night told you everything you needed to know and then some uh, about the so-called debates, I think you're going to miss the bigger picture. The bigger picture is it was a setup between Facebook and Fox News. And I give them both an F on the so-called debate. Uh, Michael Savage, time to go to some of the callers, WBAP in, Dal B -A -P in Dallas. Jerry, thank you for calling. What's on your mind? I think you have it all wrong, Dr. Savage. With all due respect, I, I believe that what happened last night is great for the country because uh, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, they rose to the top. They It, it was like trying to be um, uh, blindsided by your friends and then what did they do? They rose to the top. And, and for, for that matter, I think the winners were Donald Trump and, and Ted Cruz. I, I mean, the well, you, I would say you could look at it that way. I don't take it personally by what you said. You could say what you could say they were really doing it to make them look good. Is that what you're arguing? I don't know that they were doing it to make them look good. I just know that the character... I, I don't think that they were doing it to make Donald Trump look good. I think they did everything they could to undermine the Republican Party and Donald Trump, frankly. Quite possibly, yes, but the point that I'm trying to make is... No, no, I accept your point, that that be, the, despite their best efforts to undermine Trump and the whole ticket, the opposite occurred. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, and I can tell you... Okay, I, I point well taken. Point well taken. Who was the big winner? Who was the big loser? Wait until you see what comes in September, and you see what the idiot Republican Party agreed to. Jake Tapper of CNN is going to be the moderator? Again, they did a Candy Crowley on themselves? You ask yourself why they're throwing the election again. Then you'll know, then you'll know everything you need to know about the Republican Party. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Yep. From I am Caitlin to I am Megan in one political season. I mean, she's a trans political. She went from being an alleged conservative to a front for the Democrat Party. We know that CNN, MSNBC, and the other fronts for the CIA love the debate. We saw how Fox now tried to bury Trump. We saw how good Fiorina was. We saw how decent and smart Carson was. The main story here is that the Rad Libs loved Mayhem Kelly. Uh, she used Democrat tactics with the war on women and the comments. Then to top it off, she had Wasserwoman Schultz on after the debates, right from the DNC. Kelly used to sneer at the so-called war on women. She called it a so-called war on women a few years ago. There, I didn't see any substantial questions, not too many. This was one gigantic infomercial for Hillary Clinton. And again, I go back to Marshall McLuhan, the medium is the message. And the minute the camera opened up, on the stage, I knew the fix was in. I saw it with my own eyes. I'm, a ne I'm an expert on staging. Who did they put right in front of the camera lens? The most uh, 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 obese of the candidates. Christine, I'm not knocking him. I mean, I, we all have weight problems over 50. Unless you're sick, then you have the opposite. Then you, you know. But the thing is, why would they focus on a guy with a big gut? Like a Jackie Gleason. It's a stereotype. Fat, old, white male. That's what they were trying to say, fat old white male with the camera. <laughs> I saw it right off. I said, are they crazy? They take the guy who's probably the least attractive physically without a jacket. Well, I don't know whether he's wearing a jacket or not, but it was a, it was a, an away we go moment. It was a Jackie Gleason job. I expected an audience, uh, an orchestra any minute to say, and away we go, and he's going to do a soft shoe. 
I couldn't find Trump. My eyes scanned the horizon. Where'd they put him? The one reason everyone tuned in was Donald Trump. Don't make any mistake about it. No one tuned in to see Brett Baer's wig. Nobody tuned in to see Meatloaf Jr.'s fake eyeglasses. Nobody tuned in to see uh, uh, Megan's nose flaring. They were tuning in to see Donald Trump and the other candidates. That's who we were tuning in for. Even people on the other side wanted to see Donald Trump. I think this is being lost in the whole rating story. You look at the Drudge Report, which we all read. I read it the first thing in the morning. And the headline is, in a way, it's deceptive because you don't see the subtext of it. I'm not saying he's being deceptive. 24 million watch Fox News debate, all records shattered. But why were they watching the Fox News debate? It's going to take Michael Savage to tell you that. They were not watching it to see Megan's hair or her nostrils. They were not watching it to see Brett Bear's wig. They were watching it to see how Donald Trump would handle being on, a, on the floor with all the other guys and how all the other guys would handle Donald. Really, that's what it was about. And the big loser there was, I'm sorry, uh, um, Curly. Curly blew it. Do we have any tape of Curly? You know who I'm talking to, Rand Paul. Is it Ron or Rand? I always mix the two up. Rand, Randy, Randy Paul. Randy Paul tried to jump in. He jumped in to attack Christie, didn't he? he, he on the NSA, where's, uh, where's Randy Paul, who I call Curly? I don't know what that hair did. Where did he get that? He normally doesn't have curly hair. All of a sudden, I looked, I saw like a permanent. It looks like he came out of a, a beauty parlor and they frizzed him. Let me hear him fighting with uh, Christie over the NSA. Let's Do you hear really it. believe you can assign blame to Senator Paul just for opposing the bulk collection of people's phone records in the event of a terrorist attack? Yes, I do. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm the only person on this stage who's actually filed applications under the Patriot Act, who have gone before the federal, uh, the, the Foreign Intelligence Service Court, who has prosecuted and investigated and jailed terrorists in this country after September 11th. I was appointed U.S. Attorney by President Bush on September 10th, 2001, and the world changed enormously the next day. And it happened in my state. This is not theoretical to me. I went to the funerals. We lost friends of ours in the Trade Center that day. My own wife was two blocks from the Trade Center that day at her office, having gone through it that morning. When you actually have to be responsible for doing this, you can do it, and we did it for seven years in my office, respecting civil liberties and protecting the homeland. And I will make no apologies ever for protecting the lives and the safety of the American people. We have to give more tools to our folks to be able to do that, not fewer, and then trust those people and oversee them to do it the right way as president. That is exactly what I'll do. Megan, may I respond? May I respond? Go ahead, sir. I want to collect more records from terrorists, but less records from innocent Americans. The Fourth Amendment was what we fought the revolution over. John Adams said it was the spark that led to our war for independence. And I'm proud of standing for the Bill of Rights, and I will continue to stand for the Bill of Rights. And, and Megan, I, I, Megan, they're both a, very good. That, you know, that's a completely ridiculous answer. I want to collect more records from terrorists, but less records from other people. How are you supposed to know, Megan? Use the Fourth Amendment. What are you supposed Amendment. to? How are you supposed Use to? The Fourth no, I'll Amendment. tell you how you look, get a warrant. Let me tell you something. You Get go, a judge to sign when a warrant. You, uh, you know, Senator. Go ahead, wait, Governor Christie, make your point. Listen, Senator. You know, when you're sitting in a subcommittee just blowing hot air about this, you can say <laughs> things like that. When you're responsible for protecting the lives of the American people, then what you need to do is Here's to make sure is to make sure that you Here's use the, problem, the system governor. the way it's supposed. Here's the problem, That's Governor. It. You fundamentally un misunderstand the Bill of Rights. Every time you did a case, you got a warrant from a judge. I'm talking and about searches without warrants, there is indiscriminately of all Americans' records, and that's what I fought to end. I don't trust President Obama with our records. I know you gave him a big hug, and if you want to give him a big <laughs> hug again, go right in. <laughs> and Good job, Curly. You know, Senator Paul, 
Senator Paul, you know, the hugs that I remember are the hugs that I gave to the families who lost their people on September 11th. Those are the hugs I remember. And those had nothing to do, and those had nothing to do with politics. Unlike what you're doing by cutting speeches on the floor of the Senate, then putting them on the internet within a half an hour to raise money for your campaign, <laughs> right. and while still putting our country at risk. All right, we're going to cut it off there. Done. We have plenty this more we want to get to. It's pure honesty here between these two guys. I mean, they wanted each other. I loved it. That was uh, very much like two chickens thrown into a ring with uh, razor sharp uh, uh, talons. It was good. I'd like to see Democrats ever have the guts to do that in front of the American people. Can you imagine Hillary going on a stage and actually arguing with someone over substance? No. No, you cannot. That was a very good debate. My guys did a great job of hearing that. And I think we've done a good job so far in these last two and a half so hours of pulling out poignant points for you and uh, finding the, the hot spots for you, and you saw some of the winners and losers. I like Christy more than I did before this, by the way. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I think the guy is a wonderful candidate. I would certainly pick him over Hillary Clinton any day of the week. I don't like him hugging uh, Obama. I don't like that he's probably a little too close to Obama on too many issues. I don't like that he's for illegal immigration. I know all of that. I'd still pick him over uh, uh, any of the Democrats because I think he knows more about terrorism than any of them do and more willing to fight the Islamo-fascists than they would. Rand came out pretty good on that on the uh, Bill of Rights, no question about it. He was a stickler for the Bill of Rights. He stood up for what he believed in. I'm not quite sure he quite understands how difficult it is to find the wheat from the chaff, although I totally oppose the random surveillance of all Americans for terrorist conversations. I think there's a smarter way to do it than either of the men said, and that would be religious profiling. I'm sorry that you have to hear it, but you may as well hear some intelligence. We know for sure that 99% of all of terrorism, 99%, I didn't say all, of terrorism in this nation is coming out of one religious orientation. Why must we all suffer as a result of that? Well, the same reasons we all subject ourselves to the unconstitutional TSA, which basically frisks us like we're criminals before we've committed a crime, while looking the other way in most cases by people from that one single demographic. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. You know, the question on the women, I didn't say many of those things. I, they said something, and they were giving out some words, and I don't remember that on The Apprentice, and I don't remember, I don't know where they got some of these words, to be honest with you. In fact, I'm going to have somebody call up and find out where these words came from, because I don't recognize those words. Not that I'm an angel, by the way. I, I just don't think it's very professional. I do say this. If you're going to do that to me, I think it's great, but you have to do it to everybody else, or ease it up. But you can't do it to Trump. I mean, I walked out of that room and people were saying that was really unfair. Hey! From I am Caitlin to I am Megan. That's what we've seen, the downfall of a TV uh, newswoman who everyone thought was adorable has become a portrait of Dorian Kelly. It's unbelievable. She's become a trans political right in front of our eyes. Using the same Democrat tactics uh, that, uh, whatever that, Vasavum and Schultz would use. Speaking of Vasavum and Schultz, here's an interesting article. The defense minister of Israel just gave an astonishing statement minutes ago. His name is Yalon, the defense minister. He said, Israel is not responsible for Iran nuclear scientists' lives. <laughs> God, I can't believe this. Defense Minister of Israel hints assassinations may resume, says Israel considering airstrikes against nuclear facilities. Can you believe the uh, guts that they're showing in the face of what Barry is trying to do to them? Israel is not responsible for the lives of Iranian nuclear scientists, Defense Minister Moshe Ayalon said in an interview published Friday making a less than veiled threat to covert assassination missions, blamed in Israel could resume. He said, as the world moves closer to ratifying a nuclear deal that Jerusalem says won't keep Iran from obtaining nuclear arsenal, 
He told a German news, newspaper, Der Spiegel, that Israel would do anything necessary in order to assure Tehran does not get atomic weapons, including taking military action. So this is Barry's uh, legacy right here. They said they will not tolerate a nuclear armed Iran, that they prefer that this be done by means of sanctions, but in the end, Israel should be able to defend itself, the Israeli defense minister said. He added that he was, quote, not responsible for the lives of Iranian scientists, according to Der Spiegel, which will publish the full interview tomorrow on Saturday. But you heard it first today on Friday, right here on the Savage Nation. Charles Schumer turned on Barry. White House undaunted by Schumer's Iran deal opposition. Nonsense. They're full of it. They say they're not. Oh, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And Obama left early for his vacation to the millionaires and billionaires on Martha's Vineyard. Oh, we don't care what Schumer did. Nonsense. They were counting on Schumer. Schumer stood up for the right thing. Announcement by the Democratic senator that he won't support the nuclear pact uh, is in a gigantic, a gigantic loss for Barry. And it may imperil his own promotion, by the way. He actually sacrificed his own career to stand up for the right thing. We suspected that Schumer was negotiating something for himself. That is what people do in life, whether they're a senator or a garbage man. Everybody wants to move up in life, right? Do you know anybody who wants to move down the ladder of success? Have you met anybody who wants to do that? I haven't, Robert. I, everybody I know wants to move up the ladder of success. Okay, so Schumer obviously sacrificed his own career to do the right thing. And uh, he said, after deep study, careful thought, and real soul searching, I've decided I must oppose the agreement and will vote yes on a motion of disapproval. Now, you know and I know that Barry is not one to take this uh, lightly. You know and I know that Schumer's career is now kind of a, 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 in a cul-de-sac. He's certainly going to stay in the Senate. But you know and I know that he's been a very ambitious man and that he, I think I had heard that he wanted to be a Supreme Court justice all these years. That's what Schumer wanted. Now, of course, you need a vacancy for that. And it seems to me that the evil ones never, never go away. They just don't, they don't, I don't understand cancer, no cancer. They live forever. I don't know how this goes on. There must be a magic potion they have at Johns Hopkins. But people can have cancer for, it like, seems like 400 years and stay in the Supreme Court. I'd like to know what that elixir is myself. Anyway, that's very good news. If you want to go back to the Trump Fox uh, story, you want to talk about the nostrils, you want to talk about CNN plus Fox, plus Fox plus MS, MSNBC becoming the CIA plus the NSA all in one. If you want to talk about my observation that the big F on the screen stood for Facebook, that tells you everything you need to know. Remember Marshall McLuhan's message in the 60s? The medium is the message. That screenshot that said F throughout the debate gave it away, my friends. It said Facebook is all over this. It said this is a giant infomercial for Facebook. It said Facebook's controlling the questions and the demeanor of the inter interrogators here. It was the audience as well was a giveaway. The cheers and the jeers, I heard them. Some of them were inappropriate. And I suspected it was filled with Facebook workers uh, bust out from the Facebook factory to save a few dollars for Zuckerberg. KSFO, Colin, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hey, Dr. Savage. Um, I could tell from the get-go that entire debate was a setup, just by the placement of where Trump was next to Bush, and just the just the plain questions that, I mean, Megan let me down. I've liked her for a little while now. She's been really good on Fox, but what she did last night really let me down. I, well, are you? Uh, let me ask you something. Are you gonna still? Are you still gonna watch her uh, uh, anyway? Probably not. After seeing how she acted last night, it, it just all right. I don't think. I don't think your sentiment is that of yours alone. By the way, that's what I think. What about asking about God and abortion at the end? How much more loaded a question can you get? Look at the stereotypes. They don't like women. They don't like gays. They don't like, let's see, uh, minorities. Let's see, who else don't they like? The whole thing was orchestrated. I'd love to see a debate like this amongst the Democrats. Name a few who could stand on a stage with Hillary Clinton and take such hard questions about, let's see, the Arab Spring. Let's see, Benghazi. Let's see about Clinton Cash. Let's see, let's go back a number of years and ask Hillary Clinton all those hard questions. And let's look at those missing emails. They asked Trump about a Twitter remark that he may or may not have made years ago. 
would they ask Hillary Clinton about all those missing emails? And did they contain anything about where she was in the night Benghazi went down? Will they ask her where the Clinton cash came from and where it's gone? I don't think so. So as you see, everything is very telling. And as Marshall McLuhan taught me personally, the medium is the message. The F on the screen told you everything.